Dieter Dope for it, Super Booth. Dieter, hello. Hello, um, nice to see you here. We've got some uh, new oscillators, new mixer, new trigger sequencer. Um, can you run us through the new products? Yeah. Um, uh, I start with the new VCOs. We have uh, a new high-end VCO. It's uh, A111-2. Essentially, it has uh, the same features as the old high-end VCO. So we have the usual controls uh, and, and the usual uh, outputs. Uh, the special features uh, of this new VCO are that the outputs uh, are perfect waveforms, so there are no glitches uh, like in other designs. It's a triangle-based uh, VCO, and the other waveforms are derived uh, from, from the triangle uh, with uh, waveform converters. Also, the, the sign output is uh, excellent. It has uh, only a few harmonics compared to other simple uh, sign converters uh, with diodes only. So a new, a new circuit deriving a really pure sine wave, or very close to pure sine? It was suggested by an English guy, by Tim, Tim uh, I don't know, on our website yeah, uh, there is a reference to the circuit, uh, he suggested it to, to us. And uh, yes, you have the usual exponential controls and uh, a special feature is, uh, you see here that the VCO has also an LED. Normally you don't need a LED uh, for a VCO. It's because it can be used also as an LFO because it has an additional linear frequency control, which you see here, this white knob. You see now that uh, we have a frequency uh, lower than one hertz. And if you increase uh, the, the linear control and you turn the knob fully uh, uh, clockwise, that's the standard uh, VCO setting. There you have uh, the exponential controls for the for the octaves and, and uh, cores and fine tuning and exponential FM and so on. So um, it has an extremely wide frequency range uh, of about 15 octaves, so you can uh, go down to less than one hertz, which, which we have seen, and uh, beyond the audio range, beyond uh, 20 kilohertz. So it's ex an extremely wide range, and over about 12 octaves, uh, we have an excellent one volt per octave tracking. So the, all these features on the new high-end VCO are also in the 4HP version? Yeah, the 4HP version is essentially the same core, the same circuit, but uh, we have reduced uh, numbers of uh, controls and, and sockets. Only the, the major controls are available, like the, the pitch. We have only one pitch control, not, not the complex pitch with control with octave switch and fine and course. It's only one. Uh, control you have a jumper in inside where you can define the range uh, in this example the rate we have the full range from about one hertz to more than 20 kilohertz uh, but if you uh, you want to use it as an vco you probably want to have a smaller range so you can change with jumpers the range of this if it's only one octave or or something like that for, for better better tuning. And we have uh, the control for the frequency modulation and the control for the pulse width and all the other functions are available uh, just as sockets without attenuators and so. But after all, it's the same circuit, but with uh, a very small uh, panel with 4 HP only. Brilliant. And moving down, we've got the new output mixer as well. That's uh, the prototype of, uh, we call it a performance mixer. The idea is that I don't want to have an external mixer from Mackey or Behringer or whatever, but want to have uh, all the mixing uh, functions also as a module available. So it ha it's nothing special, it's what you expect from a mixer. You have a gain control and you also have a mute switch so you can turn on and off uh, each channel uh, without uh, the need to uh, operate uh, the controls. Then we have, uh, in addition to the gain control, we have the main level, we have uh, an aux uh, signal, and we have the panning, and uh, this is the output section. In the final version, it will probably look different, because the experience uh, at the show was that the inputs uh, sh would, would be better in, at the top of the module, because uh, uh, as it is... Well, that, that will make for great performance if, in, when the module's in the bottom of the case. Yeah, normally you will uh, arrange it like here, and then it would be better to have the inputs on top of the module. So it's it's just uh, just the layout. We will probably change. Also, we found it, it it's it's 
the position of the switches is not very good because uh, if, if you have two cables uh, connected, it's it's difficult uh, to reach the switch. So we will change a little bit the, the design. After all, it will be two modules, uh, the input module with four inputs and the output module. And uh, you can combine one or more of the input module with the output uh, module to have not only four, but eight or 12 or more inputs available. So the mixer can grow as your system grows? Yeah. 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 And then we've got the trigger sequencer, which is out now as well. Uh, the tri trigger sequencer is announced uh, since a few years and we changed it, uh, I don't know, five or six times. Uh, now it is available. Uh, well, it's uh, just what you expect from, uh, uh, from the trigger sequencer. You have eight rows. Uh, which uh, 16 steps each. We have uh, a separate module for the trigger outputs and another module for the inputs, which uh, are used to uh, start, stop, reset, and so on uh, the, the unit. And you have a lot of features uh, for each row. For example, you can define the first and the last step of each row. You can define the uh, the direction forward, backward, pendulum, random, and so on. So it's it's a very complex uh, trigger sequence. Yeah, so really easy to create polyrhythms with a 16 step and a five and a seven. And it, are the resets and the start and stops per channel or global controls? Um, so the, the, the reset, for example, is it a reset per lane or? Yeah, that it, um, in this version, which uh, is available now, it's a global function. But uh, as it is possible to update uh, the, f the firmware via USB, uh, there is internally there's a USB connector, and we think about uh, an, a firmware w which will have additional features. We have here for so-called function inputs, which uh, at the moment don't have any functions. So the idea is to assign the the function inputs to any uh, to any feature. For example, the idea is to have uh, separate uh, resets for for separate rows and things like that. Yeah. So as the ideas grow, there's no need to produce a new module, yeah. new firmware. Yeah, yeah. Th that's that's the idea that the customer is able to update the firmware if a new version uh, uh, is, is is coming out. Yeah. I think finally, and the most obvious thing from a visual perspective, we've got the new black range on some of the modules. We've got the new uh, templates for the colors as well. Um, with the black modules, is that going to be something that's offered on everything in the future or certain modules? Or uh, So far we offer only what we call uh, the classic modules like VCOs, VCFs, ADSRs, envelope generators, uh, LFOs and uh, sequencer, sequencer controller. Uh, we have more than 120 modules and uh, I don't think that um, we will offer each module in the black version. It will also depend upon the inquiries from the customers. We started now with the classical modules, but maybe, uh, I don't know, in one or two years we will have available all modules in black, but it will depend upon the inquiries. Well, that's, that's a hell of a lot of new panels to make. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. definitely. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome.